Solutions versus AWS Lambda. Uh, quickly about Cloud9, we are uh, uh, basically a cloud consulting uh, company focusing on uh, both Azure as well as AWS, particularly on the Azure space. We are gold in, you know, certified in data platform analytics, cloud or various capabilities full uh, service company all the way from architecture to migration and software development. And today, uh, Aniket will, will uh, walk you through the differences and if there are any between the two. Uh, with that, I will pass it on to Aniket and have a wonderful webinar. Thanks. Hello, all. Uh, just a quick reminder, we are having uh, um, yeah, a Power BI Pro and Power BI Premium uh, session tomorrow in Chicago uh, at the Microsoft office, so please feel free to join us. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be discussing about the benefits and the differences again between, uh, in the different Power BI uh, offerings that we have. So, okay, so for the last two weeks, uh, we, I have been talking, we've been talking about uh, the new buzzword in town that is serverless computing. And um, we discussed a couple of things. We discussed about uh, the serverless computing solution that Microsoft provides, which is Azure Functions, and also on Amazon's AWS Lambda um, in the last two weeks. Uh, today, I'm going to try and conclude this webinar series on serverless computing by comparing the two, AWS Lambda and Azure Functions. Uh, but before we start off, let's have a quick recap. So serverless computing, uh, serverless computing is abstraction of servers, infrastructure, and operating systems. So when you build a serverless application, you don't need to provision and manage any servers. So you can take your mind off of infrastructure concerns. So when I say you don't need any servers, I mean those servers are managed for you by Microsoft or by AWS, some cloud vendor. Serverless computing is driven by reaction to events or triggers happening in near real time. As I said, this is a fully managed service. So any server management, capacity planning, etc., etc., are invisible to developers. Most importantly, that we, these follow a micro billing procedure. So basically your billing is based just on the resources that are consumed or the actual time that a code is running. So what this allows us to focus on building a good app and not on the infrastructure. So we can spare our teams the burden probably of managing those servers. So by utilizing these kind of managed services, you focus on your business logic and avoid any administrative tasks. With serverless architecture, you simply deploy your code and it runs with high availability. Most importantly, serverless compute lets you scale from nothing to handling tens of thousands of concurrent functions almost instantly to match any workloads and without requiring any kind of scale configurations. Having said, having spoken about what serverless computing is, now let's see what Azure Functions are. Like I mentioned, Azure Function, of course, is a serverless compute service that enables you to run your code on demand without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure. Well, that's the definition of serverless computing. So Azure Function completely follows that. We use Azure Functions to run a script or a piece of code in response to a, var a variety of events. So like I mentioned before, a serverless computing solution is run by events or triggers. Same thing with Azure Functions as well. Microsoft is promoting this new service as a serverless option for simple APIs, triggers, notifications and anything that you can think of which probably a function can do regardless of the programming language that you're using. It's worth mentioning over here that uh, just like any other cloud service or feature, 
I'm not saying that Azure function is the solution to all. However, Azure functions are helpful in supporting your application without the need for you to provision a new fully featured API or server or any other infrastructure thing. AWS Lambda. So again, AWS Lambda also is a compute service that will let you run your code without provisioning or managing any servers. Uh, AWS Lambda also executes your code only when you need it to execute. So basically whenever you have a trigger, whenever you have an, a particular event occurs. Uh, it scales automatically. Like I said, it will scale right from a few requests a day to thousands of requests per second if you need that. And you pay only for the compute time that you consume. So there is no charge when your code is not running. With AWS Lambda, you can run your code for virtually any type of application or backend service. And all of this with zero administration. AWS Lambda runs your code on a high availability compute infrastructure and performs all of the administration of the compute resources and I say that I mean including your server and operating system maintenance, your capacity provisioning, automatic scaling, code monitoring, logging, all of this on its own. All that you have to do is supply your code in one of the languages that AWS Lambda supports, which currently are Node.js, Java, C Sharp and uh, Python. I guess Python, yeah. So let's dive into the comparison which uh, uh, differentiate uh, differences between AWS Lambda and Azure Functions. Uh, to start off the web dashboard, this is how the Azure web dashboard looks and uh, this is the AWS dashboard. Personally for me, the Azure Azure's new dashboard is very beautiful. So once you understand the organizational structure of Azure functions, it becomes very easy to navigate and um, actually go ahead and create uh, different resources on Azure, including Azure functions. Uh, but you know what, I can say the same thing about uh, AWS Lambda also. So it's more about choice, more about uh, uh, how comfortable you are using any of these portals. One important difference though in case of uh, Azure Functions and uh, AWS Lambda is that Azure allows us to, um, it, so basically Azure has a more robust Visual Studio online. So we can use Visual Studio to code our Azure Functions directly and uh, implement them. So that actually gives us a very strong, uh, that's actually a very big point of coding per, from a developer's perspective. So I guess Azure, Azure Functions are my personal choice to be a much better, by having a much better portal. Supported languages, uh, so Azure supports, like I said, uh, so it supports Node.js, C Sharp, F Sharp, Python, PHP, Java, Bash, and I hear that they are also supporting Go now. Um, whereas on the other hand, AWS Lambda supports Node.js, Python, Java, and C Sharp. Uh, well, to differentiate between the two, I think PHP support by Azure function is very strategic, uh, purely because of its uh, popularity that we use. So I guess Azure gets another point here in case of supported languages. Functions, triggers, and integrations. So like I said, both Azure functions and AWS Lambda are event uh, are trigger based. So they are executed whenever a particular event, a particular trigger uh, takes place. So in this domain also, I will have to concede that Azure functions again, make things a bit easier. Uh, so every function that you create in Azure automatically maps to an HTTP endpoint if it's enabled. Whereas with Lambda, you have to configure an API gateway separately. So API Gateway is fine, but uh, it is complex and time consuming. 
Uh, of course, you can always use certain serverless frameworks that ease this pain point uh, by automatically setting up an API for you in Lambda as well, but uh, there is an extra step that you have to go through. Uh, so Microsoft gets point for the user design because uh, you have a lot less to configure on that portal. Uh, apart from HTTP, there are some other uh, AWS and Amazon services that can act as triggers for our functions. Uh, some examples could be like uh, you can use S3 buckets in AWS. So you can put any, say I upload a, an image to an S3 bucket. So that can act as a trigger for my, um, for my Lambda function, which probably can convert all the images to grayscale or convert it to, uh, you know, crop the size to thumbnail or something automatically. So you can use S3 and unlike S, like S3, you can use any other AWS service to integrate with your AWS Lambda function. Similarly, on the Azure front, you can use um, blob storage, queues, SQL databases, or any other so Azure service, Azure trigger. Both Azure functions and Lambda can be uh, triggered at a particular schedule to run. So you can run both your functions every minute, every five minutes, every day, once a month, and so on and so forth. So I don't think there's a clear winner here, but uh, Microsoft and Amazon both have pretty powerful features for triggering cloud functions. Uh, though I definitely think Amazon could learn a thing or two from Microsoft about the user design to make it a little bit more simpler for us as developers. Talking about continuous deployment, deployment uh, when working with files, you can deploy it as your functions in a variety of way. Uh, it has support for Git, support GitHub, Bitbucket, you can use Dropbox. Uh, you know, I apologize for the spelling error over here. I'm so sorry. It's a bit bucket. Uh, Dropbox, you can use Visual Studio Team Services. We also have so, uh, support for OneDrive. Uh, we can use the Visual Studio Online Editor and many more ways. On the other hand, AWS Lambda also has some um, AWS services like Code Pipeline, Code Build, Code Deploy, which you can use for deployment. And it also has support for great uh, third party tools. Um, and of course, we can always have uh, SDKs uh, for both functions and Lambda uh, with which we can do any kind of deployment like Jenkins or we, we have many third party uh, tools that we can configure with both Lambda as well as functions. So which path, right? Uh, honestly, from my this webinar, you must have gazed it. Uh, I was thoroughly impressed by Azure, and um, I think it's in part due to its new dashboard. Uh, well, the new dashboard and the process of setting up the cloud functions into so you know Azure functions set up are set up in a logical group called apps, which makes sense for me. So I can have different little, little functions doing one particular task and club them all into one particular app. Uh, so that but that that kind of architecture really makes sense for my uh, usage. So I really like Azure in that way. Uh, although I would encourage everyone to explore and try each of these services, understand why and when they can help you. Uh, the, end game, uh, the end result can of course be a game changer for you too. Uh, so we all know, right, the, the cloud has powerful magic but not all clouds are the same. So get to know your environment, your code, your capable, uh, so that we can understand the capabilities and services that are available to you from which of the cloud vendors. Um, only with this information can you actually be in, can you, you can actually make an informed decision. And uh, of course, if you need help in making an informed decision, you can always contact us, Cloud and Info Systems. We'll be more than happy to help. Uh, well, my choice on this, uh, both these uh, Azure functions as well as AWS Lambda, well, the jury is still out. I use a variety of services because I believe, you know, there's a strength and opportunity in diversity. So I, I have used Lambda and ECS uh, because it's well established.